they used to do is when they enter a country, they used to kill these scholars. First thing they used to do is, they used to kill the scholars. Now, so what happened is, Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah with his followers, he left to a desert in the Sahara. So he had a, he had, they had, they had one of his uh, students said, you know, we have a village, so why don't we come and stay with us for some time? So Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah said, why not, let's go. He moved on. So what happens is, so this was the village, and it's just uh, it's people from Google. All right. So you, usually what happens is, in, in, in desert, around an oasis, they build a village. Yeah? So around a bigger oasis, they build the village, and about a few hundred meters away, which had a smaller oasis, they built a small masjid. They had a masjid. So the sheikh came here and stayed with his people, and this, there were about 300 people living in this uh, village. And he stayed for about a week, two weeks, three weeks. This was the month where, for example, in Bangalore, it rains for about three, four months. Yeah, in South, in Kerala, in Karnataka, it rains for three, four months, right? But in the, in the Gulf, where there is, in the desert, it rains for three days, four days, and five days. And they say, you know, it's like, it's like a big thing, you know, it rains for five days. And rain is very important because the oasis has to be replenished. It has to, to fill again. So the people come to Sheikh with them and say, Sheikh, you know what? Uh, it's not rain for the past two months. It should have rained by now. Is there anything that we can do? Ask Allah for rain or something like that. Because, you know, these people are just new to Islam and they do not know much. So Sheikh said, yes, there is a, there is a prayer from the, from the Sunnah, from the Sunnah. What is it called? Salatul? For, pray for rain? Esteska, yes, salam. So next morning, about 250 people walk towards the masjid. The Sheikh says, okay, tomorrow morning everybody come. So whoever could pray, they walk towards the masjid. Early morning, everybody's walking towards the masjid. While they're walking towards the masjid, they see an old man carrying an umbrella. Everybody starts saying that it's 5 a.m. in the morning, the sun's not out, it's not raining, it's not raining past one year now. This man has lost it, this old man has gone cuckoo, you know, he's really lost his mind. You know, and everybody started discussing and look at him carrying an umbrella and everybody, you know, it's a small village, you know, it becomes the topic of the day or of the moment. But anyways, they go towards the, the masjid, they pray the fajr and then, uh, according to Saad Rastis, they pray to Raka Sunnah and then again, it's a group, you know, do all that is done. So why are they making the world? You can call it coincidence, you can call it miracle, you can call it, you know, it happened according to history. What Tariq, according to history, why they were going making the world? Well, this has happened to me also a couple of years back in Bangalore. And they called for a, a rain dua in, I think, about eight years back, or ten years back, in one of the grounds near Fraser Town. They said, you know, Sablok Magrib, we all went and, you know, while we prayed and came out, started drizzling. And you know, the, the whole thing, feeling was like, you know, subhanAllah, I feel it's good now, you know. And Allah answered our prayers. So, while they were making the dua, it started raining heavily. Half of them stayed in the masjid. The masjid could not accommodate everyone. About 150 people started running towards their village. The old man opened his umbrella and started walking towards his house. Question, why did the old man carry his umbrella? Confidence. Faith, faith, confidence, yakin. 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 So, how about 250 people of that village walked towards the masjid? Didn't they have faith? Hope. They have hope? Certainty. Certainty? Conviction. This old man was so sure, he said, if Allah has promised rain, it will rain. I need an there are thousands of teachers today. How many of them have real faith like the old man in their profession today? I'm not asking you to carry an umbrella to school tomorrow. Yeah? But I'm asking a simple question. Are we just like the villages or like the old man carrying the umbrella who had strong faith in Allah and in Allah? So the question, it's a very deep question. Think about it. And how serious are you? I mean, how much you 
you know, how much faith do you have in your own self as when you, when you say you're a teacher, right? When you say you're a teacher, you're saying that I am a very strong follower of the Prophet He was the Mu'allim, he was set as a teacher, right? He's a good example. So, we're coming to the main point today, Sean. <laughs> I can hear myself. Okay. Uh, the reason uh, the, the, the topic was chosen was because, you know, we get to, I, I get to meet a lot of uh, school management across the world. I might be in Malaysia, I might be in Dubai, I might be in, uh, you know, in, in, in Saudi and everywhere. Wherever I go, they have this concern. A big concern regarding teachers. We have a problem with our teachers. They don't understand. They don't understand the values. They don't understand a vision, a mission, and everything. I'll come to that. Before that, I would like uh, another story, please. Are you ready for another story? Yes. Yeah? Okay, All right, let's go. The story about this rich man. He's a multi millionaire. He's got a lot of money. He's got cars, and he's done everything halal and haram that you can think about. Right? But then, they say, you know, in pop stars, 27, 28 is a high rate of uh, suicide. They do everything in their life and they, they feel something empty inside. The same thing happened with this man. One fine day he said, I want to change. I don't want this life anymore. I want to change. I, I want something to change in me. So he goes and talks to his friend and he says, uh, Omar, please help me. I want to change. I've done everything. Allah has given me everything, the best class. You know, the best, everything that I have, but I'm, I need to change, please. So, Sheikh Umar says, you know, you know what? Go to this masjid, there is one Sheikh there. Go and meet him and talk to him. So this man, he says, okay. He sits in his, uh, what's the best car, like no, a Porsche or it might be a Jaguar. He sits in it and he goes towards the masjid and then he sees the Sheikh there and the Sheikh is having tea. He says, Salaam Alaikum. He says, Wa Alaikum Salaam. He says, Sheikh. You know what? Omar sent me here, he's a good friend of mine, and blah blah blah, he says a whole story, and this is what about me. Please tell me something. Change me, Sheikh. Change me. He says, really? Let's have some tea. He says, no, 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 don't worry about that. You know, just tell me something that will change me. He said, hold on, let's have some tea. He says, okay, all right. He starts pouring. The Sheikh starts pouring tea into the cup. It gets filled to the brim. It starts overflowing, it starts falling out. And he doesn't stop. The shake doesn't stop. He keeps looking at this man, the rich man looks at him and says, that, you know, Have I come to the right place? You know, why, is he keep, why is he not stopping? He can't take no more. He says, Sheikh, please stop. It can't take any more. The shake stops, smiles, looks at him and says, You tell me, if I want to put something new in it, what, what, what should I do? What did he say? What did he answer? If you have to put something new in it, you have to refill it, what do you have to do? You have to empty the old cup. Yeah? You have to empty the cup. Remove what is there. Your old way of thinking, your beliefs, your ego, your attitude, everything. Empty it and start afresh. Yeah? I'm going to connect these stories to the end, inshallah. When we finish it, we we'll finish the training. Great. Now, I want you to tell me, as you know, individually, anybody can tell me. Um, good and bad. Example of a good teacher. Think about your childhood. You are also students. Yeah, give me an example of a good teacher. Take the name, no problem. Say this is my ma'am or Chandrakala ma'am or my be Stephen, Father Stephen was my convent teacher and you know, something good about that. Please, anyway, who, who, could, who, who can help you? Good teacher, yes, yes, brother. Can you give me a mic, please? Mic, mic. Yes, brother, quickly. Good teacher, good example. Yeah, it's uh, Mr. Enius Thomas. Okay. He was my chemistry teacher. He used to be jovial and casual. Jovial and casual, thank you very much. Anyways, anybody else? It's a good opportunity for you to talk about your teacher. Yes, sir. Teacher and uh, whenever my mom used to meet her, my mom used to be a positive 
feedback. So that was the teacher who always used to give positive feedback about me to my parents. That was a very good motivation. Positive feedback, Mashal. You remember because you used to always give speak positive about it. Yes, brother. My mother is my teacher. Your mother is your teacher, Mashallah. Allah. They all are the only. I am uh, a teacher. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Jagata. Okay. He is very dedicated even he is reached uh, 65 70 years now. He still takes a lot of classes. He is very inspirational, very dedicated, very encouraging and very supportive to all the students. So how are you? You have some nice words, dedicated, supported, you know. Anything else? Anybody else want to speak about the teacher? Yes, bro. I have a teacher uh, in my seventh standard. She gave me a gift. Uh, you know, I don't know the reason. I think maybe the best friend, but I'm not sure about the reason. But the book was about a science experiment. So that gives me to do a lot of experiments. Uh, you know, I did uh, many such kind of experiments. Later in my high school, I showcased in science exhibition of those things. So that book, book gave me, you know, changed me kind of, you know, gave me to open up. <laughs> Uh, and showcase things in a program. Perfect, all right. Uh, before getting into the bad part of the teacher, you know, bad part, bad teachers, you know, of course, do you, do, does anybody have a recollection of what any bad teacher? No names, don't take their names, but, uh, you know, but an example of a bad teacher, please. But don't take their names, but this, this is what he or she did, that's why she's bad. We always remember good teachers, and we never forget bad teachers. <laughs> An example, this is yes, you want to say something? Others, uh, the discredit and they enter in the personal background of the families. Uh, it's such a discredit. Okay, okay, discredit. Okay. All right, good. Uh, we've got examples of good teacher and bad teacher and everything, right? Now, I want you all to close your eyes right now. Everyone, close your eyes. I will not continue unless I see everybody's eyes closed. You say it, Prabhu Maria, Alhamdulillah. Close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. Everyone. Okay, great. Picture or imagine a nice house. Just imagine a nice house. Close your eyes, everybody. Everybody has to close their eyes. Uncomfortable, bro. It look, you know, imagine a very beautiful house. Okay. <coughs> You see a beautiful garden outside. Then you keep walking, you're walking and you're enjoying the view of the garden. And then you see a few cars parked outside the house. Big house, a few cars parked outside the house. Then a few men standing outside and discussing with each other. They're talking, discussing a lot of things. You walk past them, they don't look at you, you're as if you're not there. You just, they keep con con they, they, they continue discussing. You look at the door of the house, a very beautiful wooden carved door, and suddenly somebody opens the door. You've not even rung the bell, but it opens. The person walks past you as if you're not there. You walk inside and you see more people inside the room. The hall is filled with people. And then you see few are crying, few are sad, and they're looking at something. So you walk closer to see what are they looking at. You see someone sleeping on the ground with white clothes. You go closer, you see it's you. You are sleeping there. It's your dead body. I want you to imagine. Think about your friends and colleagues and family. What are they talking about you right now? You can hear them, they cannot hear you. What do you think they're talking about? Your students. Two or three of your students are there. If you're a parent, the children are there. If you are a wife, your husband is there. If your husband, your wife is there. If you are a school management, your teachers are around you. What are they talking about you? One thing that comes to your mind immediately. When you go to somebody's janaza, you talk good things about them, right? But sometimes when you talk, you know, 
unfortunately, people will talk about that. But now I want everyone to open their eyes. Open your eyes. To begin with as a teacher, it's very important. They say keep the end in mind, right? When you start something, keep the end in mind. How you want to be remembered is very important. Because this moment will come. You will be lying there. You'll not be able to walk through the garden <coughs> with yourself. But you will be able to, you know, you will be, you will feel the people around you walking away from you from the from the place of like, your brain and everything. So what do you want people to be remembered as? As somebody who disgraced people, somebody who respected, gave hopes to people. Yeah, I still speak about one teacher that I always take an opportunity. Her name was Veena Martis. She was an English teacher. She was an English teacher. And the reason I, I adore her or I respect her a lot is because when my whole family said, he's useless, he ain't but by her life, he is a failure, he is you know, he's stupid, he is dumb. She used to make me stand and say, okay, today's uh, recitation of this poem will be done by itself. I used to be like, mm, not me. She started with that and it continued. Every time when she was like, she used to say, I'm tired today, you do the class today. You just read the, 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 the exercise. And alhamdulillah, like, my stage thing started from there and until, since then I've been talking everywhere over the world. So one teacher, one teacher, it all it took. There were other four or five teachers who used to abuse me and you know, literally abuse, use words. But Alhamdulillah, one teacher changed. So the question is, we have a generation of students coming to you who will be future parents and teachers. What impression that do you want to leave in their mind? Okay, let's move on right now. Uh, Okay, what are the mistakes? Teachers, uh, how many people wrote school management here? School management? Perfect! Many. Sir, how uh, school me? Teachers, what are the mistakes that teachers make that you think that you know, this is a mistake? Yeah. You have any complaints regarding your teachers? Okay, how many people have management people have complaints against, against the teachers? Teachers, you know, these are Generally, I'm, I'm already a year old in school, but I have a couple, couple of complaints about my teachers. Complaints or challenges or... Yes, bro. We get everybody, everybody a chance to talk, right? Teachers not sticking to the schedule. Teachers not sticking to the schedule. All right, yes. Everybody else, quickly. Any management person here? They never pay attention, person. They never pay attention. Okay. Yes, yes, bro. Yes, bro. They don't prepare income. They don't prepare income. Okay. Prepare income. Anybody else? This is? Who will you do? Yes, correct. Not punctual. Not punctual, correct. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Everybody else? That's it? Use of mobile phone. Use of mobile phone. Okay, basic things. Okay, use of mobile phones and everything. Great. Alright. That's it. That's all we have? Lack of passion. Lack of passion. Great. Teachers. What complaints do you have against the management of this board? <laughs> Please! If your management is here, be careful. <laughs> anyway, just, just be, use this as an opportunity to be, just be gentle. Talk whatever you feel like. You know, I mean, today it's a good opportunity to let everyone know yes, we have challenges both sides from teachers and management. So, teachers, no who wants to open up? No salary hike. No okay. Great, okay, good. What else? I'm coming to that. Very important point. Yes, yes, brother. I'll repeat it. Not appreciate. Not appreciate. They don't appreciate as much. Yes. Bully, sir. Which? Can bully? Open up. Don't be scared. Tell me. Teachers come. Teachers come. Maa me nahi dete bacho ko. Maa na chahiye bacho ko. Maa nahi chhodte hai. Mujhe maa mein teacher mein kyu nahi chhodna? Sahi hai na? Mat maariye bacho ko. Okay, very good. Not very good. I'm coming to it. Yes, what else? I'm salary Mr. Okay, okay. Don't pay salary on time. Okay. Lots of work. Too much work. They expect they pay peanuts and expect too much from us. Okay. What else? Do not do independence for teaching. Acha, they don't let us be creative and independent in teaching. You know, schedule hai, yeah, hai. You follow karo. Bas, okay, okay. 
Anything else, teachers? Yes, say sir. The management is not empathetical towards us, our problems, our emotional needs. Perfect. They don't, they don't empathize with the problems, with our issues, with the problems. Sorry? He's not a teacher. He, he is a teacher, he's a student, everything, mashallah. He's doing Sayyid Sahib is, is a, you know, mashallah, he's a guru. Yes, anything else? Teachers, that's it. You don't have any complaints. You don't even, uh, I think your management is here. Most of the management is here. <laughs> of course, you know. Uh, Al Bashir principal service is okay and we have a teacher pushing him. Brother? Right? Yes, okay, I'm not saying any names now, anyways, okay, great. Sheikh, may I have a point mentioned? Do you know about the Foxo rule? Yes. What is Foxo rule? Carrot. Team Mayna J without bail. Carrot. Team Mayna J. Without pay, even if you touch, if the student goes and complains saying that you have to do it, you have to do it. You have to do it. It's a problem that you have to give permission. It's a training color. You know, you need to know that you need to do it. Physical abuse is a different thing. But now you have to do it in three months. You don't have to do it. No jammy. Alright? So that is a legal point. I don't want to discuss more. That's a different topic. It's a physical abuse in school. Okay. Somebody is more lucky? Come there. Come there. We finished this. Quickly let's move on to the next one. Great. I'll come to all the points. Inshallah we'll discuss this. Salary issues and all this stuff. Good. Uh, skills. What are the skill sets that a teacher should have? What skill sets should a teacher have? Sorry? Conceptual skill. Okay, what con okay, conceptualize things. Yes, sister. Empathetic, caring, knowledge of the subject and scientific. Wow. Empathetic, empathizing, caring, knowledgeable knowledge of the subject and scientific. scientific. MashaAllah. Very good. All right. Anything else? Yes, sister. Uh, she uses skillful in her teaching methodology, patient, You know, why is the management silent? I don't see anybody from the management saying, this is what I look, this is skill set that I, I, I was expecting the answer to come from the management side. That when I'm recruiting someone, you know, what are the skills that I look for? Facilitation. Facilitation, great. Communicate. Great. Now, what is a simple question? We use this word a lot. Communicate. What is communication? What is communication? We use this word. We have to communicate. We have to communicate. What is expressing yourself? If I am talking, we, we both are. I am saying something and he is listening. Is that communication? Is that effective communication? When I say something and everyone understands the same thing, that is effective communication. If I say something and you understand something else, you understand something else, that is not effective communication. I say communicate. You have to be specific with the teachers. That what do you mean by communication? The onus is on the management. Okay, what is management? Let me come to this interesting thing. Can I have a marker, please? Have a marker, man. I will have it put in my pocket. Okay. Take it done. What is management? Who can tell me? Management, quickly. Team that manages the school. Sorry? Team that manages. Okay, what else? How many of you are from management? School management, how many are here? Please tell me, what is management? It's a governing body. Okay. Let me explain a very different way today. Management, yeah? I'm very sure IIM Bangalore will come and call me tomorrow. Just kidding. Anyways, management first is Without the team. Is managing people or men. Okay? But much before that, it is without the M. It's managing me, myself. Yeah? When I'm successful managing myself, 
let's take an example of your teacher right now. When a teacher is successful managing her class, a schedule, a time, and all the soft skills, that is when the management or the, or the team feels that she can handle another two or three teachers. Yeah, she can be the head of the head of the department. But when she's made the head of the department or of management, when people are given, you have to add the team. What is the team? Teamwork. You have to make them work as a team. So when it comes to management, it starts with me that when I manage my time successfully, when I manage my people, when my, uh, my job which is given to me, assigned to me, when I do it correctly, that is when people will be assigned to me. And when I make them work as a team, that is when management becomes complete. Alright? Now I have a question to everyone. Uh, when I spoke about skill sets, everybody said this skill and that skill and everything. There are two key skills for any profession in the world. What are they? Two key skills that are required for any profession in the world. Attitude, okay? Learning. Learning. Consistency. Consistency. Okay, now, then we have to come to a point to, uh, to define what is skill. What are skills? Soft skills. Soft skills, somebody said, okay. Perfect. He said it. Two skills which are very important. Soft skills and technical skills. For example, let's take an example of a teacher. When I say, when I say technical skills, what are technical skills? The academics, subject matter, you know, you know, your expert, your subject, <laughs> yeah, your certifications. Yeah, all this are technical skills. What are soft skills? Body language, the way you teach, creativity, yeah, how you interact, you know, empathize, listen, yeah? Perfect, all right. Uh, we'll use this bicycle model. I would love, I would request you to go back to your school and call all your teachers together and do it again in front of them. We'll do that, inshallah. We'll try to keep it simple for you people, inshallah, right? Okay. Bicycle. We all have, you know, See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created each and every part of our body uh, so perfectly that, you know, without one of them, you know, we'll be short of a sense. Or we'll be not able to do the same thing. Same thing as cycle has been modeled. If you see, each and every part of the cycle is very important. Imagine if there's no seat. Yeah? Even if the small, you know, cover which they put, I don't know, nozzle for the air, is not there, the air comes out and, you know, the tire, everything. So my question is very simple. What does the back wheel of a bicycle do? What does the back wheel of a bicycle do? It accelerates. It pushes. What else? It propels. It pushes the vehicle, the cycle forward. Yeah, man. Okay, perfect. What does the front wheel of a bicycle do? Balance. Sorry? It drives. It drives the vehicle. Drives the vehicle? Direction? MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, absolutely. It gives direction. It moves very well. When, 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 when the vehicle is propelled or pushed forward, it takes where you, know, it takes where you have to go. Yeah? Perfect. Great. Now, the question is, if I have to look at the bicycle right now, which part of the wheel, if you have to use two skills and two uh, you know, uh, wheels right now, which wheel would depict technical skills and which one? The soft skills. Front wheel is technical skills. Front wheel is technical skills. I might be tricky. I might just put something there just to confuse the people. That yeah? Front wheel is... Why do you say front wheel is technical? Front wheel is for my purpose. Okay. Back wheel is to support it. Okay. See, something that propels you forward, get, gets you that job. You know, if somebody comes to you, a good teacher, you know, somebody comes for an interview right now, if you're a teacher, you go for an interview and you say that, you know, I can interact with the students a lot, you know, I am loved it. What's the first thing that you'll ask? For example, you it's a Montessori based school right now. What's the first thing that you'll ask? Are you certified? An IT professional, you know? I love working in computers. Okay, what are your certifications? What have you learned? Right? So any profession, anything, the back wheel, 
is your technical skills. The front wheel is soft skills, gives you direction where you want to go, how you want to teach, where you want to reach. Yeah? Great. Let's look at an example right now of a bicycle. Imagine you have a great front wheel. Your soft skills as, as a teacher is great. You're an amazing teacher. Everybody loves you in your school. Your students love you. You're like the apple of the eye of the whole school. Everybody's talking about you. But you have a very small back wheel. About your subject, you're very bad. Yeah. You don't know. You, know, you might be a very bad. It might be a mathematics teacher, might be a science teacher, or a social studies teacher, but bad. A lot of complaints coming about you. Will this, this cycle move forward? Yes or no? Let's look at another example. You have a great back wheel. You've got the certifications, you've got the BEAD, you've got the Montessori certification, you've got anything, everything that you have. But you have a very small front wheel. You don't know how to teach. You're a subject matter expert, but you're very boring. That's what the feedback from the students comes, very boring. God doesn't know how to interact, doesn't listen, doesn't let us talk, doesn't, you know, a lot of things, a lot of complaints. Will this cycle move forward? No? Okay, there's another scenario. What if both the wheels are small? Your technical skills are poor, your soft skills are poor. Immediately change your job. If this is the scenario, you're a teacher by chance. But if your wheel looks something like this right now, don't despair. Don't feel bad. You've identified your problem. Yeah? That I have a small front wheel. My soft skills are poor. Rush up to your management. Go to Google, YouTube, anywhere, find out teaching skills, conventional teaching skills. Google it, find out. Find out some resource person can come and help your teachers in your school. Do whatever you can to get this done. Yeah? So what you're going to do is very simple. I've got a homework for everyone. Yeah, we give homework, right? Now you get your homework. It's between you and Allah. I'm not going to check tomorrow. Today when you reach back home, I want you to draw your wheel of your profession today. The back wheel. Yeah? Keep a standard size of a wheel. But this is good. And then draw your wheel, the front wheel and the back wheel. You don't have to be, you know, as um, artistic as me right now. For example, uh, I will try, I'm, I'm trained for this. It's a bad word. Anyways, you can just draw the wheels. <laughs> you know, just draw two wheels, two circles, and then, you know, it's a self-assessment that you do. Where do I stand as a teacher today? Where do I need help? Is there any certification that I have to do? Don't look at the courses as a poor work, I'm just kidding. Okay, so where do I need help with? Is it my back wheel or my front wheel? Yeah? So, everybody ready for the homework? Will you do it, inshallah? Yes. How much time do I have, brothers? Brother Ashraf? 20 more minutes? Perfect. Let's move on. So this, this was the bicycle model. Management. Don't blame the teachers always. Why? Because we have to accept, as you said, right? Manage me. We have to accept your mistakes first. If you have a bad teacher, who recruited them? Mm -hmm. Woman, you are in bad place of a teacher, somebody walks in and then, oh, okay, join our school. Then you start saying, oh, the hearing all right, phone all right, this is not happening, not punctual, not paying and all this stuff. With the expectations done, do you have what, what hiring policy do you have right now? Do you have policies in place? How many levels of recruitment do they go through? How professional are you in recruiting teachers? What kind of induction program do you have for them to understand your values? Have you by said, if I ask someone right now, vision and mission and values, you know, what efforts have you taken to train your teachers on these things for them to understand? 
So that is the big question right now. You know, hiring right is very important. Now, um, six steps to hiring, quick, if you can write it down. We don't have time, usually I do this for about uh, 45 minutes to one hour about the whole process of hiring teachers. Uh, but it's good for teachers also, tomorrow you might be the head of department and you might be asked to, or you might be a vice principal tomorrow, you might be principals tomorrow, yeah? Yes, you all have goals and aims, right? Might be you start your own school tomorrow, Allah wa inshallah, yeah? Say inshallah. Inshallah, right. Okay, score, what is the process of score? What, what is score? What is the meaning of score? Score? Basically, to scrub something to make it shine. Yeah? So whenever someone comes for an interview, don't be in a hurry. Don't go by the external thing. Sorry, uh, the external thing. Score them, you know. Ask them a lot of questions. Have different levels of interviews. Yeah? How many of your schools and school management conduct demos when teachers come? Demonstrations that we have to have. It's part of the policy. Do you have in a written document, ma'am, that you know the policies? You have a policy, a recruitment policy. Is is it documented? Yes. Very good, mashallah, Very good. If it's not, please start doing it. Score is the first step. Don't take it as the face value. You know, as much as possible. They say, you know, You know, try to. You know, for example, if you get a dish. Filled with all greasy oil and everything, will you accept it just like that? You will try to see yeah. how clean is the base, yeah? Or Raghurubi, or Raghurubi, unless you get to get fine clean. Second one, recruit. Uh, spread the word around with your own teachers. Tell people that we are recruiting, we are hiring, we need people. And why they should work with you. There are some good talents out there, they don't work with you, alright? Third one, collaborate. What is collaborate? If you are the management of the school, top management, involve your teachers in recruitment. At least in one stage, if there are three or four stages of recruitment, one stage the teacher should be, at least in the demonstration, they should be there. You might get, you know, you might have all seen something which they will, they will you know, identify. It has happened live in my school. We were about to recruit some teacher, one teacher, <coughs> but when we sat and did a demonstration, the teacher, the junior most teacher observed a one quality of that teacher and we decided not to take it. Yep. Collaborate. Elicit. What is elicit? Ask more questions. Make it more clear. Find out what they really mean. You know, they say 80% of the CVs are copy pasted. Like if you get a CV right now, 80% of the data in it or content in it will be copy pasted from somewhere. I've done it in the past. Talking with experience. Yeah? I've worked in different call centers and everything. You know, yeah, scratch it, chalo, yeah. Assistant manager call center, okay. Go Google CV of assistant copy twist and then add a few things that your experience goes mad. The rest of thing I'm hardworking, I'm you know I'm networking or whatever, you know, smart working, everything. So I'll come to that, you know, scrutinize, we'll come to that point also. Ensure. Now we'll quickly go to this point here. Uh, When you say collaborate, when you, okay, this this point when you uh, sorry, okay. During the interview, elicit information you really need. Keep in mind what soft skills we spoke about soft skills, right? Yeah, soft skills. So what soft skills are you looking at in this particular teacher? Ask them questions based on that only. What are the standard questions that people ask? Management, can you tell me? When you're recruiting a teacher, what are the standard questions? They say there are five questions that you have to ask a teacher. First question always, teachers also be, be, be ready, yeah? I'm training the teachers also how to prepare for interviews. Very dangerous trend, my thing. Okay? Okay. Uh, first question. First thing, ask them to talk about themselves. What are you looking for when they're talking about themselves? First one, sentence formation. Second one, flow of thought. Third one, grammatical errors. If they make any one of these, or finally, mother influence, if they make any one of these, that should be a first, you know, first no ball. Yeah? So, first thing, when you ask questions, ask them to talk about it. Just don't 
uh, ask them to talk about this and oh, okay, great, you're from there. You know? As when you're recruiting teachers, you have to look at these four things. Flow of thought, sentence formation, grammatical error, and mother tongue influence. These are the challenges. Brothers and sisters, you can have the best infrastructure in school, buildings, swimming pool, the works, archery, and everything. But if you don't have good teachers, you will see the reflection on your students. Yeah? Is it true? Yes? Good. First step. What is the second question that you have to, you have to ask a teacher? Second question. That is third and fourth. Second question should be always from the CV. Go thoroughly through their CV and find out and ask them this honest question. Ask them how many of this in this CV are, 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 are been, have been attended by you and how many by you have copy pasted. Trust me, 100 percent of teachers who are working with me today are the ones who agree that they copy paste. Because why, when they talk and what they are type, it doesn't match. The audio and video, audio and what I'm seeing, you know, visual is not matching. I'm very sure that person cannot write this CV. Right? With experience, you will come to know that. Recruiting hundreds of people in call centers and everything. So this is what? Great. Uh, ensure, finally, when you are taking someone, ensure 100%, ensure that you know that you are doing the right decision. Yeah, have the policies, let them know what, what, what they are getting into. Don't blame the teachers tomorrow. After that, it's your journey and their journey together. You have to train them, you have to support them. Teachers coming to you right now. You know, there is a story about this, uh, one more story. Uh, this is backpack. You know what backpack is? They just take a backpack and they just walk around the world wherever they want to go at 10, 10, 20 dollars a day. So this backpacker was walking towards uh, a jungle and uh, he sees two people sawing a tree. You know, sawing a tree? Saw, everybody knows the saw, right? Okay. They're sawing a tree trunk and he's got nothing to do. He just sits there and he watches them for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. They're tired and they're you know, sawing the tree, they're cutting the tree. Then he finally he says, Excuse me, brother, brother, <coughs> take a break, stop, drink some water, you know. They look at him and say, mind your business. They continue, continue, continue cutting the tree. Again he stops, he says, after five minutes, he looks at them and says, brother, please stop. Take a break, drink something, get some energy, sharpen the saw, get back. They look at him saying, we've been doing this for 15 years, don't tell me what to do. We've been doing this for 15 years, don't tell us what to do. He smiles, he gets up and he walks away. Now we all know that the saw, if it, you continue working in it, it gets blunt. It leaves regular sharpening and now we have the electronic one, the machine one and everything, the, the mechanical one, but earlier it used to cut this way. So whose advice was right? The one who observed them or one who said we've we'll been we'll be doing this for 15 years? Who was right? The observed, right? Why? Because you need rest. So if you if you have invested your time and money, if your management has asked you to come here today, it's just to sharp, sharpen your saws. Yeah? A regular interval is required in your career. The moment you say I know everything, that is suicide. You have killed yourself. Yeah? So use this opportunity that you have to get here to come to sharpen your saws. Now, I'm going to ask a very simple question. Which was the last book that you read? Who can tell? How many of you people, how many of you people will read here? How many people like reading? Yes, I'm going to start with someone who was... Yeah, lift your hands again, please, everyone, so we have, can see everyone. Yes, brother, what is the last book you read? Who's the author? Okay. By Ram Perfect. Anybody else? Yes, well, which book and also who's author? Last book, name and author. Okay. 
Yes, sir. Name and also. Discover the barrier in you. Have you written another book? Sorry. Coach Habib. Sorry. <laughs> I think you're talking about uh, the, the warrior within you. Okay, perfect. Okay, just get it. All right. Uh, anybody else? Any other books? Yes. What the philosophy of the man? My sister is saying. Okay, perfect. Now they say, there's a, uh, there's a big saying, you know, there's an important saying. They say, if you don't read, you cannot. Lead. Yeah? So leaders have a habit of leading. You, you look at, uh, you read anybody, any uh, you know, leader's autobiography. They have a habit of leading. They want to know what mistakes others have done so they don't do the same mistakes and learn from them. They learn from others' mistakes. So my request as teachers is, when was the last time you learned something new? We want more salaries, we want the salary hike for what we are doing. If you're doing the same thing and expecting different things for results, don't blame the management, man. Blame yourself. What opportunities have you taken or made or shown them? What skills have you shown them? New skills that you've learned other than when they recruited you. What new things have you done for them, for you to ask for a hike? Fair enough, right? Yes? If I am a, a, a sportsman, a cricketer, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm getting out at 25, 30 every time, I'm saying, "Mujhe salary hai chahiye." Century to maro, yar. It is half century to maro. Yeah, start there. Show some improvement. What new things have you done? New shot to dikhao mujhe cricket that you learned. So what have you learned? When was the last time you went on YouTube or Google and typed new teachings? Kids. You know, or changes in the teaching world, best education system in the world, how to use creativity in class. When was the last time you did it? Ask yourself. Because unless you can answer these questions, the day you say, Yes, I have done, you will not be worried about your salary because that will come automatically. The management will see that you're putting more efforts, new efforts. If you keep on doing the same thing and expecting different results, don't blame others. Blame yourself. All right. How much time do I have? Do I have two minutes? Two minutes, please, 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 please. please. Okay. I'll quickly, teachers, I want to give you something which you can go and apply back in your school. I went to the market. This is the real story. This is not, not the real picture, though. I went to the market and I found a man selling nibu. So I asked him. I asked him, uh, Bhai sahab, ye kitne diye? Kaise diye? We asked him, kaise diye in Mumbai? Kaise diye? He said, 10 rupees ke 2, 10 rupees ke 3, 10 rupees ke 4. What did he say? 10 rupees ke 2, 10 rupees ke 3, aur ye 10 rupees ke 4. What has he done? In corporate world, we have something called the ABC analysis. What is it called? The ABC analysis, basically, these are my best, these are my chalta hai mein, these are my... Okay. Now we always find out, how do I find out, how do I analyze myself if I'm a good teacher or a bad teacher? Or have I improved as a teacher in my class? Yeah, before your management comes and tells you, you should go and tell the management something, right? When you're asking for your salary hike, the manager, kya kya tumhe? Same thing, kids are passing and going on the next class, what have you done? So I'm going to give you a small uh, head, uh, head, uh, tip. <coughs> There's something called the ABC analysis. Okay? Now ABC analysis, basically you have to identify as teachers who are your A's. Now A's can be uh, something to do with their uh, you know, marks, like 85%, 90% or some uh, you know, characteristics that they have. Some, something positive about them. Always smiling, happy in class. You know, these are the words. But usually it's marks. So you know, let's come back to marks. 85 and above are your A's. Mother, example. Between 65 and 7, 85 are your B's. And anything below that are your C's. So write A, all the students, your A's, B's, and C's. You, as teachers, your job is to ensure that in three months, the C's move, some of this, most of the C's move to B. Yeah, at least a few months. 
at least some of the B's move to A and none of the A's come to B and vice versa. Very simple technique. Is it simple? Excel sheet kolo, A, A liko, don't go to class, oh you A people sit together and B people sit together, no, don't do that. The idea is once you have this, you can use multiple things out of this. You know who your A, B, C's are, when you're making them sit together, ensure there is one A in each uh, table, in this sitting together, in that team. Yeah? Buddy them with the A and B. But let them not know that they're A, B, C in the class, just for your information. So when you can go back to management and say, you know what, I had so many C's, percentage of C's in my class, but Alhamdulillah, by midterm, I've ensured that they've reached here. You see, that these are the efforts you have to put sisters and brothers as teachers. This is what you have to tell your uh, man. Just one more, one, one quick thing. Recognition. If I ask you, when was the last time you recognized your students? What would the teacher tell me? How many students are, how many teachers are here? Any teachers who could quickly remove your little hand? I'm losing time, I'm very sure Ashok Sahib is going to start the buzzer right now. Yes, sister, uh, tell me five students' name. Any five students' name in your class? It's Maria. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, when was the last time you uh, appreciated or recognized Maria? Uh, when I was giving the results. Date? Date was... Uh, Tuba, when was the last time you appreciated uh, Tuba? 27th uh, Other than the, at the time of the thing, you have to do it before that in class. I don't exactly remember that. No, no, I'll tell you why. Good. I'll tell you why. Why, why. why that happens. Brothers and sisters, we all love recognition, don't we? We like to be recognized, right? But sometimes what happens is that we recognize one or a few group of students more than the other. As teachers, we have to know that we have done or not. So the next tip, which is very important, which you can go and action item in your school is called the recognition chart. Very simple. This is the 2017, April 2017. These are the three students in your class, and this is why you recognize them on this particular date. So in that month, you will know by end of the last five days, just look at the fact, oh, these five students have not recognized. Find something that they're doing good and recognize them. Go there and tell them, great job. So when the parents come on the open day, or oh, your student did a great job. He's a very good student, very promising student. No, you tell them, you know, on 15th April 2017, Faria Abdul Razak, your daughter, had a friend in class. For what reason? There is great uh, leadership quality she showed. Or Shafina shared a food with a classmate, with a classmate forgot to get a different box on this particular day. Great job, uh, you know, um, Shafina. Now what happens? Everybody, and you're tracking also, you also realize that number four or five, your five students, four and five students have not been recognized. There's another small tip I want to give it to you before I end my session today. I wish I had more time. Um, okay, that's okay. Anyways, Jazakallah khairan, Jazakallah khairan, may Allah reward you all in dunya and akhirah. Uh, and uh, may Allah give you a house better than mine in Jannah. Say Amin, please. It's a double dua. If it's accepted, you also mean and I'll also be from the other side. And Professor Salam said, always expect the best for your brother. Yeah? And sister also. So, so may Allah give you a house better than mine in Jannah. And remember the three stories. The first one is, have faith in you as teachers. Yeah? Give you 100%. Second one is, what is the story about? If you want to learn something new, Empty the cup and start fresh. Yeah? What is the third thing? What's the third story that you spoke about? Never say I know everything about 20 years, 30 years, 15 years, 12 years of experience. Yeah? Keep open, sharpen your saw. Whenever you get a chance to learn new things, keep it keep open, keep uh, keep learning new things, alright? May Allah make you the best teachers. May Allah make you the best parents, teachers, and management. And we are very good all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah. You're not going anywhere. Okay. So, teachers, management, the three stories. So, we'll first ask the teachers. We'll keep, keep the management of it little behind. So, what was the learning? What was the solution? Can you put it this way? What is one thing that you want to take back to school from this video? One thing that you take back and you will try to do it, or you know, that, that's the best way of doing it. Who's got the mic then? Yeah, 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 after that. Yes. The ABC analysis. The ABC analysis. May Allah reward you, sister. Yes. Oh, 
Would you like to have some more comment on that? IBC analysis. Sorry, ma'am. Would you like to have some more comment on that? Yes, uh, the ABC analysis has been used in the manufacturing. Uh, it started when the industrial revolution happened, where they wanted to have the best product and the, you know, buy the, 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 the medium product and the, the work based products. So then the corporate world started using this in assessing their employees. Yeah, and then now this tool has been used in different parts of the world. Even ISO as an organization uses ABC analysis for different things. Even the American Army uses it. Yeah, when somebody comes with recruitment, they find out who are the A's and B's and C's. Who should be sergeant level, who should be, you know. So everybody uses it and even school, it's a beautiful you know, tool. If you execute it, if you can track it, if you can train your teachers to do it, and tell them, you know, this is how we can do it. Now you know who we are, B's and A's are. Nothing like it, inshallah. Yeah? Okay. yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, always ABC analysis should be like, you know, for the marks or for the grades or this. As I told you, it can be used for their characteristics, something's okay. It might be somebody who's very grumpy. The idea is to get them to be nice, helpful. Somebody, you know, so it can be used for multiple things. Moment you can, you know, this, this tool. For example, even the back wheel or the front wheel, the example is the bike example which I gave you. It's not only for teachers, you can use it as a, a son and a husband. Yeah? The back wheel could be the son and the front wheel the husband. So, where are you good? Are you a good son or an equally good husband? Brothers, you get my point here? Yeah? Right. From the brothers, as a teacher or as a teacher, a learning. The recognition chart. The recognition chart. May Allah make, may Allah make you successful, maybe. Right. Okay. Yes. Now the management. Let's talk uh, from the management perspective. What was the learning? What was the takeaway? Six steps of hiring. Hmm? Steps of hiring. Steps of hiring. Yes. Yeah. That is one thing that we are lacking today as a lot of Islamic schools and where I, where I go and interact with the management, they don't have defined policies. Leave policies be documented need. So ensure that you have give one teacher the responsibility to document all the policies that you have. Very important and get it and educate your teachers on it and get it signed by them. Okay. I want to point my fingers. Anyone else from management? For the teachers also for that matter. Yes, Sandeep. Categorize your teachers A, B, C and have a development plan. Beautiful! Subhanallah, I told you multiple views. He's saying he's going to categorize the teachers A, B, C and ensure that you can have training interventions and to ensure that your C's join me instead of firing them and saying that no, I made a mistake, get out. You know? Giving them an opportunity to learn and move on, move up. Allah Akbar, may Allah make you successful again. MashaAllah. Right, so unless someone else has anything to say or comment, yeah? Uh, <laughs> Something was missing. And what was that important tip? Last minute tip you missed out on. Which you said I'll give you one tip and then said no, that's the end of it. Okay, um, I'll talk about the reason that uh, we did not observe. The teacher was doing the demonstration basically and when we were asking, uh, she started using a lot of colloquial words. Acha, you know what I'm going to do? But you know, she started using a bit of. Uh, I, we come from Mangalore. We use a uh, language called Bari language. I'm a, I'm a Bari. My uncle is famous here. The Bari is real estate and everything. So, uh, the Bari language. So she started using a lot of Bari words in between, which we didn't catch. We're just listening, and you know, her body language was great. And you know, she was teaching and everything, and she's going on using some words. Pinay, what I was trying to tell you is, you know, Pinay is later. You know, so she started using all these words, which is. Uh, and we realized that yes, she has got that thing, we won't take it. Why, why, why did you think that you can correct See, there are a few things which I would take time to train them on, like skill sets and all this stuff. But language skills, if they're acquired for 15 years, I cannot change them in about a week or 10, 15, 20 days. I don't have time, I don't have the resources, I don't have the energy also. I would rather get someone who does not make these mistakes. Teaching-wise, if she has some creative issues, I can train them like ABC skills, how do you recognize students, I can train them.